Sasha here for netbooknews.com. It's um, Thursday, Friday. I don't even know anymore because uh, Mobile World Congress was quite long. And uh, we are in a little tapas bar over here. And I'm talking to Ramin from, uh, from Petit Petit or XP Petit Petit. And he's showing me an absolutely groundbreaking new and very innovative um, touchscreen. Um, front end. So Ramin, please let us know a little bit about this, what you're doing with Petit Petit. Okay, so the whole interface basically uh, relies on four basic dimensions, namely people, places, things and time. So what you have is people, things, place and time, which is pronounced Petit Petit. Uh, okay, good French one. for small, small, right? Uh, the whole thing relies on touch. So if I touch this uh, people thing here, I can uh, drag one guy out. Um, and the nice thing about the whole user interface is that it's based on halos. So what you can do is you can pull back Sven here into that circle and Sven will influence the information retrieval here uh, and show me other people that I and Sven actually share. So that's, uh, that's Konstantin, for example, or Benjamin, uh, and so on. So um, what I can also do is, uh, when I look here at my things, then I have emails, music, uh, different music uh, genres, and so on. Uh, but if I pull Sven into the halo of things, then it will show me the emails that I have exchanged with Sven, right? Okay. But uh, I can also take, let's say, my emails here uh, and drag them out so to the timeline. timeline. Okay. Uh, the timeline is universal for all of the information that I have. So uh, RSS feeds, emails, my played music, everything will show up here on the timeline. So if I zoom out a bit, then I will get the emails uh, that I received, right? And now what I can do is I can drag out uh, Sven again and make a cut set so that I only get the emails uh, that I received from Sven, right? Fantastic. And now uh, if I even want to uh, reduce the set further, then I also uh, drag out Nicola, which is our COO, and have this reduced. Okay. Now, let's say I want to, um, as this is a timeline, I can do the following. I can open up one of these emails, and the timeline is generally uh, a thing that you can play. So what I can do is I can go through my emails just by pressing the play button, and it will automatically uh, play all my emails uh, regarding this subject that I just generated. Wow. As you see. Now what we can also do is drag one out of these emails, right? Um, and now what you see here is one opened email. And let's say I want to forward this email to Gianni. Uh, I can simply drag Gianni out and pull him uh, into this message. And it will automatically generate an email where I can forward these, uh, uh, these emails here. Actually, you also have a quite sophisticated input system, right? Yes. yes. So if I want to write a new uh, email to Gianni, then I can uh, use our text input uh, system here. So um, watch out. Which is is actually uh, a system that predicts the words that you want to write uh, okay. and it works uh, on a cloud so if I press the first word then immediately the follow-up words will be shown uh, I'm pretty sure uh, that uh, this um, software uh, uh, that was it uh, works, for example, uh, works. That's um, impressive. And so what I can do is uh, I can also say, uh, uh, let's say, um, hey, uh, hey, Johnny, and uh, 
the system uh, constantly analyzes what I'm writing. So what I can do here at this copilot, it uh, analyzes okay. what I wrote. It's building up association and connections. Exactly. So what happens is uh, actually Johnny is proposed here, and I again drag him in here, and I generate a new, uh, a new message. Right. So what you have in conventional email systems is you know you open up uh, your uh, email and then you write some uh, addressee and then you uh, pull in some uh, let's say attachment and stuff uh, but what we can do here is let's say we take uh, Johnny again mm -hmm. and then um, let's say we want to forward him uh, some song from Leonard Cohen uh, what we do is we take Leonard Cohen because he's a person uh, we pull him out here to, uh, to the, the song library. Uh, the songs what we have. So Leonard Cohen live, and what I can do is I drag one of these songs out and just move it to Johnny. What Let's happens open up is an email. Uh, an email with the attachment uh, of the song. Fantastic. So um, one of the other things is the whole thing is based on gestures. So what we can do is uh, we can simply uh, uh, clean go. up the dis uh, desktop, for example. Um, now let's say I want to look at my pictures. So what I can do here is, oops, uh, what I can do here is I can. Um, Oh, there's a bug in it. No problem. It's okay. Now the software is doing strange things. Ah, oh, okay. Now we are here. So I can pull out my pictures, for example, again, drag them to the timeline. And what we see here is uh, the pictures that I took on my last vacation, which is last year. Okay. Uh, as these pictures are GPS tagged, our software not only pulls in the pictures onto things and pictures, but it will automatically generate uh, cities uh, under places. So what I can okay. do is I can, uh, for example, pull out Brisago and pull it here to pictures and then it will filter the pictures according to uh, what's going on here. Right? Now we know what geotagging is good for, right? Exactly, exactly. So again, I can open up one of these pictures here and I can certainly press play. Uh, and again, as uh, the same thing as emails, I will see uh, the pictures that I took in Prisago. Okay? Very That's cool. My, uh, pregnant wife. <laughs> so what you can also do is um, speaking of uh, generating manual associations you drag one of these pictures out so what you see here is Vincent uh, he's my godchild okay um, and then what I can do is I open up uh, his name okay Vincent Konrad Bloch okay and now what I can do is I make this gesture like a circle and then I can tell the system I want to associate these two items here and I press associate and, and now what happened is it associated this name uh, to the pictures and I only get those pictures that are associated with Vincent. So Fantastic. basically you can build up uh, your own associations yeah. by hand or automatically uh, using the software. That's really cool. So, um, give us a little idea, for, for how many years have you been working on this project right now? So, uh, we invented that uh, two and a half years ago. Okay. And uh, now we will uh, start with the closed beta uh, very soon. Okay. And you also have an, app, an application, I think, on Android, right? This, this little yes. uh, input system yes. that we saw. Uh -huh. So, uh, is this already available on the Android market? Uh, we launched it, uh, I think, yesterday on the okay. Okay. Market. Um, Maybe you want to show this so that the guys can get over to Android Market, take a look at your yeah. app. Uh, so what you can do, again, uh, this is a dual language thing. Uh, what I can do is I'm uh, pretty sure. At, uh, so that's actually the same so input system that we saw exactly. Petit Petit. 
exactly, exactly. So and this is available uh, on the Android market right now. Right, exactly. And we will. Uh, uh, it's actually available in 74 languages, and we will oh. uh, 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 put on more languages on the Android market. Right now, there is English, and we will have 10 more languages uh, in the week. And what you also can do is you can mix languages. So, for example, I'm German and English. So what I do is I press ich, and then I get my you get the uh, my ones. second uh, German ones. That's exactly. really, really, really cool. So yeah, that's Petit Petit, and um, the app is called XP Predict. XP Predict because um, it predicts words. Yeah, you can get it on the App Store right now. So guys, you know, watch out Petit Petit. You know, especially for touchscreen interfaces and touchscreen devices. You know, this is something it's absolutely new and by far the most uh, innovative thing that I saw during MWC. Thank you so much, uh, Ramin, for showing this to us. Yeah, thank you for such.